What kind of bimbo brings a shovel to a gunfight anyway? <laughs> I should shoot you right now on general principle. I know you sleep, motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, shut the fuck up. Let me handle this. Nip, nip. I can nip this right in the butt. Nip. Harley, Harley, it's cool, baby. It's cool. We just talking. Harley, baby, stay with me now. We'll get Benny now. He just salty because he fumbled in and he bought sin verse way too high. Want that shovel with me, baby? Not him. Busy, you just hang back and you don't do a goddamn thing. Harley, you're doing great, baby. And I'm proud of you. And Joker's proud of you. Tell Harley you're proud of her, Joker. I'm proud of you, honey bunny. I love you, honey bunny. I, I love you too, honey bunny. Now I want you to go into that bag and you get out my ledger wallet. My sin verse land NFTs better be there. Do you understand me? If a single sin token is missing from that wallet, my wrath shall be upon you. Do you understand me, motherfucker? Right now, we're just all going to take a chill pill and we're going to tune in and see what Road Dog said. All right, everybody just calm down. Calm down. It's going to be all right. It's almost over. It's almost over, Harley. Just calm down. Bobby, where are you, Bobby? Hello, 911 emergency. I, I think my babysitter's. I, I think she's a serial killer. I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm frightened. I need cops over here quick. I, th I don't know how many people she's killed. I, there's body parts. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She's looking for me now. Where are you, Bobby? Yes. I was snooping around. I opened up a drawer. There was there was a whole drawer severed penises. I think she's when I was huge. I don't know where she could have buried a body that big. I swear to God, bodies, ma'am. Why are you laughing at me, Bobby? Ma'am, hello, hello. Oh shit, Bobby. What kind of bimbo brings a shovel to a gunfight anyway?
stolen from me Little by little, piece by piece Until I'm complete on you and you got no clue what I'm supposed to do I can't help check check one two one two check check one two three the play the play Smiles, everyone, smiles. No, you wouldn't take what's not yours. What? If you know who I am. I win the night. Come on, come on, let's hug it out. Hug it out. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Ouch. Everybody's feeling this drop today. Man, the signs were there. I get kind of upset with myself when I, I think back to all the times that we were standing over here looking at total three, and I'm sitting here staring at this 3.618, and you know, you got that voice in your head, man. Take profits, take profits. Okay, a little bit. Take profits. Okay, I'm doing a little bit better. Hey, prophets. Oh, hell. God's darn it. And then here we come a dumping, dumping. Then we take a look at total three over here on the bigger chart. Let's take a look at it on the daily. Man, oh man. So we on the smaller time frame, we worked out a little fib magic got a 3.618, 3 which is like, you know, Man, reaching that target is like the... Well, that's our hopium to get there, all right? You know, that's like the extent of a move. It's like, that's turnaround time. And that was off an extension based off of like, a, I think probably this move down here. And, and 
Even beyond that, we've got this area right up here, 812 billion. That's the 618 Fibonacci from the, the whole move when we swing swing high to swing low. Haven't even quite made it up there, but you know, knowing that's a turnaround point too. So two little areas just like screaming, screaming for weeks. Hey man, I might be getting ready to do something. I might be getting ready to do something. We've even talked about it, we've talked about it, but it's, it's funny how your emotions come into play. I think you know what I'm talking about, right? I know what I'm talking about because my emotions were in there. So. But yeah, but but this time it could be different. <laughs> Whatever little, you know, just that little thing just to make you maybe not follow the rules exactly the way that you're supposed to, that kind of thing. Guys, this is a great time, one, not only to uh, take a serious look at those altcoins that you missed out on, it's an opportunity, two, is a great place to look back at your strategy, analyze how it's performing for you so well. I had to do that to myself today. And ask yourself, what can I do to make it better? What can I do to avoid this? Or at least be better prepared for it. Now, I've mentioned before, and I think we need to talk about this again. And this is one of the things that saved me, because normally, the old me, I would have got wiped out on this. I would have got wiped out. I was coming dang close to it on some of the more conservative margin trades, believe it or not. Um, those are all fine. I managed my risk. I had a plan B backup for that because of what I'm getting ready to tell you. All this stuff about Bitcoin, man. I, I know. I know, right? <laughs> Get out Bitcoin. The happening's coming up. There is such low liquidity. There's very few Bitcoin on exchanges. Big companies are going to straight to miners now, trying to get it. They are that desperate. And of course, we got manipulation up here because, well, everybody wants it at a cheaper price. But think for a moment that what we've been talking about, we can expect a lot bigger moves this cycle. And I think it is it's very apparent now. I'm sure you might agree. You got to adjust for these big moves that we can be getting out of Bitcoin. I mean, if your strategy is not got something that will save you about a, I'm, I would say a 30% mood. Not that we're getting that today, but we could. And will your strategy support that? And I'm like, man, I'm having to look at what I've got going on, which is very conservative. I mean, they could throw a hurting on me. I'm having to do a lot of uh, risk management. Uh, mainly meaning adding some backup funds, which, you know, I'd plan for that just in case things go beyond what I thought. Here's plan B. Well, gosh darn it, it just sucks when you have to initiate that. Now I've got a plan C, but <laughs> I don't want us to get to that point. Should be able to find a point of relief between now and that kind of situation. But when we kind of zoom out on Bitcoin and look what's going on, it's really not that bad. It's seriously, it's not, it feels terrible. Why it feels terrible is it's not Bitcoin that's dumping so much as it is good old total three. Everybody jumping out of those altcoins. The hopium that I got to give you tonight, there is a little bit of hopium. Take a puff, pass it around. Don't bogart it. Please don't bogart the hopium. This trend line we got right here, that's where we bounce from. That's a good sign. Again, I want to stress the moving averages here. I'm on the one day, total three. I got old Lucy down here at the bottom. She's underneath the 300, and that's okay, or the 360. But we're also underneath the 800. So Lucy and the one 800, the 800 moving average, they're going to slow things down. But when she crosses over it, oh, there will be a definite boost in Bitcoin. You can definitely expect that. And if you backtest this, you will clearly see uh, what happens when that happens? We're getting ready to see the 360 cross the 800. Now that will probably take well into the, the week and it's yet to be determined if that's going to be a strong cross or cross or if it's just going to glide right past it. Seeing how the 200 just moved up past the 800, which is also bullish, that's equivalent to like a golden cross. And technically that would be don't buy now, but buy the next pullback. And I would consider this the next pullback. We had a target down here. I just lowered it a little bit. We were at 568. 
But along this trend line is basically what we're looking at and still looking if we come and do a retest. But man, that's a hellacious drop that we got out of altcoins. And that's the brunt of it. And so it's your altcoin portfolios with that big 20% drop. Even more if we take it up from the toppy top areas when we were all happy. 28% drop, almost 30% drop of altcoins. Liquidating lots and lots of people. Got a couple of my small positions. Got my my render position. That was about it wasn't very big though. It was about three hundred and something dollars. Three maybe a between three and four hundred. And uh, it got one. It got one of my um. Gosh darn it. Avax positions. So we've got all that reestablished. And the beauty about what I was doing on spot margin is you know me catching this here. It gives me a good chance for, you know, we do get a bounce off this trend line. You know, I can make my recovery back pretty quick in those, so I'm, I'm pretty confident. But it was it was more of planning that saved me, even though when I look at it, I was like, man, you could have done a whole lot better on this. Could have done a, but could have, would have, should have done a, it, it's just a bad day. But let's look on the bright side here, seeing what we've got now. It's a very popular pattern right now. A megaphony, yeah. Now this is a bearish megaphony, which normally comes to the downside. I would be looking for a third touch to break through and I don't really count us as having one quite yet. But that's just me jibber jabbering. As you see it break this line, oh gosh, no, no bueno. But honestly, I think we can play around in this pattern, even come up possibly bringing our altcoins back up to the previous highs and prices or even higher up to the top here so that's a little bit of opium and the moving averages are kind of giving me that opium now we look at something like the MACD of course this is still in very bearish territory there the three day is the one that we were looking at right here on this and in Bitcoin right the three day already has crossed. We talked about it several days ago, but man, you know, you can be, you can have spot on TA. You can even have the perfect setup. Let's just say it's fixed and you know, price is going to do something a certain way, or supposedly you tow, told exactly what it's going to do. And you know, for hundred percent, it's going to end up doing that. You can still psych yourself out psychologically managing those trades. And, and really, if you ask me, that's where, where it really, comes in with trading it's the management of your emotions and then also managing those trades and and it is definitely tricky right now and so a lot of people definitely got wiped out on this but in a way it's healthy wiping out all the leverage because everybody's wanting to catch that one trade i mean i'm wanting to catch that one trade too i'm still trying to do it right that's the whole goal get that one trade and let it just ride baby Oh, that's, that's the holy grail, but very few people actually pull that off. So shout out to everybody here, man. I feel your pain. I know you're suffering and gosh, my bags are down and I'm sure yours are too, unless you're smart and got out or, or listen to what the charts were telling us. It was telling me the same thing as telling, you know, I'm right there, but I think we can all look back and see, well, we probably could have executed things a little bit better. I can't find my chat. There you are. You're hiding up here. Trying to just give a shout out to everybody here, man. So shout out to Heart. We got in the moment. It's a slaughterhouse, he says. Seeing red everywhere. Extremely's here. Angel's guest list. In the moment. Moonlight Supernova. Mr. Miles, how's it going? It's a new experience with that pre-stream countdown. <laughs> Music, huh? Epidemic sounds, baby. I got some good stuff over there. Jackson says, I sold all my time and I'm super worried. You know, time actually was holding up pretty well. Let's take a look at time real quick. Time is Chrono Tech. I like the tokenomics on it from what I've seen, but man, she's just been a slow, it's like an XRP, like a QNT, just hanging around certain areas. Um, let's go with, I guess we'll look at it on Coinbase over here. So she's still, what, we're still at what, $27? That's actually good. Considering how everything else has dropped. I mean, you know, uh, 
considering how, how this performance has acted and was so slow and everything, I'm, I'm surprised we're not sitting at 20. I mean, for real. So I take that as a sign of strength. Here on the, I'm on the three day, three days holding the 21 moving average. Let's see what we got on the one day. One day is kind of lost on, but 200 crossed bullishly over the 360 there. Maybe I should keep these bigger moving averages on. I'll keep them on for a little while. This looks okay to me. I mean, it could definitely, everything can definitely go worse. I mean, it could just depend on what's going on, you know, in the world today. But there were some bearish signs over here. Anytime we break a trend line and retest it, that's usually means they're going to come down. It's, it's, it's hope that you didn't come down this far, right? To retest this trend line. There might still be some more downside here, but um, this 200 moving average, this trend line, and this 360 moving average from $20 on up to 23 there offers a whole lot of support that you know we haven't even come down to. So I think it looks kind of nice there. So I think 23 looks like a nice area to look for it to bounce from. In the moment says, can you please charge Solana? I sure can. Solana. Okay, so we'll just make phone. Lost that little sucker. This is what they're supposed to play out like right here. Boom. Notice how it worked. Because it will work the same way. Upwards, downwards, backwards, sideways. Invert it, whatever. Let's look at it inverted. A lot of times we see it this way. 70% chance for this to break to the upside if you find it this way. For real. They come down and do a partial decline. They find an area and then they come back and retest that area and then they break out, right? And the opposite is true on the decline. And that's what we got. Now we're retesting this bottom trend line and it seems to be holding. Although, man, we did wick through it. So... That's the first sign of trouble in my book. Now it can hold, but if she ever comes back down to here and retest it again, she might just go ahead and pop on through and maybe come down and touch this 200 moving average. That's a possibility that would kind of sucky suck a little bit. But now that we got more information and we can zoom out a little bit, it's always worthwhile looking at the bigger picture, which is a very popular pattern right now. And that is crazy, right? Until that one day, there's a recovery and you're back up about $272. Sounds crazy. Gosh, I feel for the people who put in 100000 somewhere real cheap and didn't take profit when they broke this trend line because gosh darn it, they could have got out of that market. That first sign, breaking the nine moving average, breaking this trend line, or even seeing the nine moving average across that 21 moving average, all the little signs between, oh, around... Uh, hundred and ninety three dollars on to 183 anyone that got into it say somewhere around 113 109 110 dollars especially you know they've been in the market and had some experience and know some of the stuff they could have definitely took advantage of a about an 80 percent gain right there just just with that simple little technique of drawing a line in the sand here and saying baby when that line crosses i'm taking my profit boom well, we'll wait till this sucker chills out and get back in but I don't know. I feel like a lot of people ended up writing that down. Well, that would have been a good come up, though, wouldn't it? Ha ha! So I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little silly. That's the Sheila Jeet in my copy. Price labels. So 129, she came down. Ooh, she came down as far as 121 over here. I bet that scared the dickens out of some people. If she does break down, it's not going to be pretty. But you know, the, the really only bearish thing I see is right here with the 800 above the 666 moving average. That means that... Uh, I know, and if you're new to this channel, this is probably a new moving average for you, and it's not it's not a gimmick or anything, but I, I back-tested the 666 moving average, and do it on your charts and see what you see. Yeah. Price respects that little sucker. Yeah. 
So the devil is definitely in this market. However that you want to look at it. Personally, I like to make the devil kind of cute because why do you want to look at an ugly devil? So she just likes to get over here and kind of mess with price a little bit. That's Lucy. I call it the Lucy's line. So I don't have it on here to be sacrilegious or anything like that. It's just like, gosh darn it. <laughs> it nails the market. So Solana, I need you to bounce here. Do we have any good signs? There is some divergence here, man. It's hidden bullish divergence that I'm seeing here on the RSI. That typically means at a point of support that the trend, overall trend, should or could continue. I mean, you can also, you know, the hidden type is also kind of easy to invalidate too. Price just keeps coming down. Eventually, the angles on both the RSI and the price will both be pointing down and nullify it. So you can't just really count on it. You got to wait for an actual reaction there. But that is a possibility playing out here. Could find support here with that divergence. That means trend will continue and then we just continue. Try to make a higher high, maybe come up to this secondary target I've got up here at 232 because 206 already got hit, baby! Nailed it! Wow! Yes, if you were watching this channel, you would be up 45,000% or whatever. YouTube is so fun. Are you guys want to talk about dead people for a while? That's kind of popular. Maybe we can talk about a goldfish funeral. I don't know, just something to lighten up the mute a little bit. What's up, guys? Let's get back to the chat here, man. Extremely desirable says, oh, you guys, a uh, conversation. I'm not going to interfere with the conversation. Justin Crypto says, I made 15K off of a 30X long from 0.03. Oh, from 3 cents to 12 cents on Casper? My man. Ooh, a 30X. So you were on perps. I wonder how much did they, was the fees bad? Sometimes the fees can get you on that. Justin says, I only threw in like a hundred. Oh, well, my man, my man. That's, that's worth celebrating right there. That is worth celebrating right there. So you see for yourself how it is that when you get in on those nice juicy bottoms there, the, the better you get your position and hold it, Especially at this point in the market, the more money you make. And so that gives you a, a lot more money to buy some more Caspa as it's dipping down to these juicy, juicy prices. This is what I would be doing because I like Caspa. I'm a Caspa freak. Bish Guru. Hey, welcome to stream, man. I think it's worth uh, bringing up the Bitcoin dominance broke out of its eight year top trend while Bitcoin. I uh, was dumping. Don't want to see that trend continue. That uh, reminded me of something important to bring up that I just forgot about. So we got Bitcoin dominant switch. Do you see it over here? Over here. We got a target over here at 57%. I didn't draw the line. I guess I should draw the line. Almost getting there. But if she breaks out of this channel, there might be some... When we zoom out, I mean, we just got a little four hour window right here. Just targeting some... A, a shorter version of the trend. We need to zoom out, really, but what we can see is it, it's going up, right? Give me just one moment. I'll, I'll be brought back. Got tired of me nose itching. All right, so I got to bring up this chart, and I, I'm bad about leaving them up, so I'll try not to do that. This is my Bitcoin, oh, I, 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 I shortened it. All right, so Bitcoin dominance. So if Bitcoin dominance goes up and Bitcoin goes down, altcoins do what? Dump. That is exactly what we saw. That, I should have been more on my toes of seeing that. And after the stream last night, I was looking at Bitcoin dominance and saw it going up and I was like, that can't be that great. I probably should have said something. Or mentioned that, but I still wasn't appreciating the magnitude of this if and then statement there. <laughs> so it, it's crazy how sometimes it does take a little retrospectiveness looking behind to see the signs that 
don't know. I can't say we, we didn't miss them. We just are just um, should give them more weight. But the emotions, man, they, they trick you. They are so good at it. Emotions are, they make you think this logic. Your feelings make you think that it's actually logic talking to you sometimes. And um, sometimes that voice is hard to discern. We're just having retrospective moments right now, making a learning experience out of this, but the definite signs were there. It's not like, it's like it came out of nowhere, a black swan, but really no the charts were telling us early early we we just we were just weren't connecting enough dots and putting enough things together you got us tether dominance coming to the upside doing a double bottom at a point of resistance down here when dominance goes up that's bad for bitcoins usually now we got bitcoin dominance going up which is kind of interesting as why the price is going down but dominance is going up that always bewilders me and then altcoins dumping here is the other's chart. This is altcoins, basically. So we've <laughs> tracking this kind of makeshift line. That's gone. Best thing we can do now, I think, is shift over to the daily. That is the daily. Let's take this to the daily. Let's get rid of some of these things so we can see it a little bit better here. Let's take this to the daily. Take this to the daily or... I could rap for you. You wouldn't want to hear it, but I could. <laughs> Doing impressions. <laughs> Since somebody watch cool these days. I don't know. It is good to have fun, though. I just think it's also a good opportunity to look at all the coins that we could be getting into, too. So I don't want to neglect that after we start looking here at the market, just kind of looking over. Look at this Bitcoin dominance, man. If you break back into this channel, man. Bitcoin dominance, 57 is nothing. We're looking at 62-ish. I left that thing on the screen there. Told you I'd do that. So I got all these set over to the daily now so we can kind of zoom out, man, and gosh darn it. Let's see how we can read this. I'm going to uh, this dominance chart. I really, really want to take a look at that. This is our dominance. It's not a head and shoulders as much as anybody want to make it one. That could have. No, you kidding if you have no, you got no shoulder. You got no neck on there. You just got a shoulder. You got a head and then an arm with a broken leg attached to it sewn on backwards by a shoddy professional servant surgeon of 15 years oh we got that little guy not shallow blah 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 well let's do a little hindsight 50 50. I did not yeah that didn't lighten the nail it You did okay. Sometimes. When you don't want to take the whole measure move and do the whole multiplier thing to it, you know, to kind of nail it in. To start to run the touches and just, I like to just come straight down. You see, that works a lot. Now, that's not a Thomas Bukowski thing, but uh, that's just something I kind of noticed over time that it's worth looking at and noticing. Because um, from here to down on this pattern, that nailed it. So we got that. So met our target there. We're just playing around here, trying to figure out what the hell Aquans are doing for a moment before I start looking at some really juicy projects. That so this is what. Uh huh. Following that, lost it, retested it, retested it again. Okay, so now I need a secondary trend line. And we are dealing with that kind of thing, which is weird. But you were that pattern. I would love it if this is as far as you go. I really would. 
Let's see if we got any confluence with anything right there. I like to double check. When I start looking at a chart, man, the biggest thing I'm doing is looking for confluence. I'm finding like three things that point in the same direction. Sometimes just two, but three things. It's like a little cherry on top. Gives me a little confluence. I got two things right now. We got the measure moves that we just mapped out through price action only. And then we also got a 618 Fibonacci area coming in right there. So it's telling me this possibility there might be a bounce here, but falling wedge breakout. There is about a 60 off the top of my head. I think it's about a 64% chance. Actual stats are over on pettersite.com. Thomas Fukowski, if you want actual statistics for this stuff that then I are a lot more accurate than the standard 68% you're told for every freaking pattern. I'm only on, I'm only on certain YouTube channels. Where are you, Price Label? So this is others. This is dominance. This is like dominance for our altcoins, and it is severely she's lacking, man. She's not nearly as possible as not nearly as popular as she was just last week and it's kind of hurting her feelings a little bit it's hurting my feelings too it's hurting my pocketbook but uh you know we're at 11.21 percent could come down another percent there retest off of that a bounce off of this area would be good that's what i'm saying i would like to see us bounce here there's a there's something saying that might happen but don't hold her breath too long again a bitcoin dominance comes right back up here in this pattern man bitcoin is going to continue going up the dominance will go up, and if the price doesn't start going up with it, well, then all coins again are going to dump. However, if Bitcoin goes up with it, all coins will just go down a little. I mean, it's not exactly like a just, a, oh my God, the bottom fell out of the market. That's a dump. Just saying. So we need Bitcoin to turn around and at least bring our altcoins back up a little bit. Get us back in above this trend line here and let us have a, a fighting chance. But man, it sucks that we lost that. And I keep wanting to look at total three. I just keep wanting to zoom out and zoom out and see what I'm missing here. But if we are, but I'm not seeing it. Let's turn off some of this noisy stuff. We just got our old fibbies up there and uh, we can take those off. We got the one mark that we needed there. We got our pattern that we're currently in. We can clean some of this up a little bit. Don't need any of that. That's kind of last idea of the shot. You, you died. You're no longer valid. Is there no more hopium left in the world? So 534. Ah, let's tighten up this trend line here. Oh, come on. Give me something. Yeah. For real, for real. I mean, you're not. You got to come down just a hair. Just a hair. Did we nail it? Is it nailing that? It's in the, it's in the vicinity right there. How far could we? Even carry it back to this area. Oh, underneath there, top of here, maybe. Top of here. Some areas here. So we got a little fuzzy little zone here that maybe also giving us some port there for our total three. Now that I like. That I like a lot. Because that makes pattern-wise, that makes a lot more sense to me. Because I like the trend lines. Bye bye. Bye bye. That line doesn't even need to be there. I'm finding some hopium. I'm finding bits of hopium. I'm really, really liking these moving averages, to be honest with you. Let's flip on the bigger guys one more time. So still, Lucy and the 800 got to dance a little bit. 300, okay, they're the bigger ones. They got a little stuff to do. So if we do get a bounce, I wouldn't expect just a, yay, we're back to normal instantly. I, I think it's going to, you know, it'll have to struggle a little bit, especially when it comes back up to midway about 650 billion uh, but it looks like we got a good chance of actually bouncing here meaning that this might be a good place to i don't know add to our backs because it's all in the red 
guys are going to look for altcoins, anything that you guys are looking at. Otherwise, I'm going to start throwing them out, throwing in some of these real world asset projects that are on the down lows. Striga says, I didn't sell my time. Good for you, Striga. She's up. I'm, I'm surprised she stayed there. Yes, I am a student. I love this ghost. Look at the prices, 40% off this week only. That's it, board nerd. That's exactly the attitude that you need to have in this market right now. Let, guys, <laughs> let us do keep it real. Maybe we do need a little hint, a little dose of hopium here for the market. Do, do, do we need to go over this one more time? Let's do this. Let us do this. Hey, I'll keep Lucy on the moving average so you can kind of see some very interesting things while I do this. I'm on the daily Bitcoin chart here. Lucy didn't come into the picture on the daily to right over here. Pretty much just right above the support level. Price came down and bounced off Lucy right there. Found support with Lucy again. Lost Lucy, rejected off of Lucy, then broke out above Lucy and then everything was fine. And we didn't touch Lucy again until right over here. After that second top there, we came down straight to Lucy. When you reach heaven and you fall from grace, you go straight to the devil. That's what I'm finding. Happened back here too. Went up to a high, <laughs> fell from grace, went straight to the devil. So when Bitcoin tops out, its main target thereafter will be the devil. Just letting you know. She bounced off the devil, bounced off the devil, broke through the devil, and then the devil had Bitcoin. This is when Sam Bateman Free came into the pictures right here, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it was. When did you rock my world, Sam Bateman Free? I think it was a. I think it was June. I thought that was in November. Uh, oh, that was. Yes, yes, yes. Was that you? This was uh, Do Quan, or this was Do Quan, and this was Three Arrows and all that crap. I don't know. The devil got into the details and then all hell broke loose. And, you know, we finally got above the devil. Right over here at uh, 28,000. And then it was on. So on the, the daily, we're kind of good being above the devil. But the devil's got across the 800. So we're kind of lost it over here. She needs to grain that back, and then I think that's where we're going to see the major pump. Major pump. You know what happened the last time that Lisa crossed over that 800? It was right over here. Starts out slow. I'm glad she went crazy. So I guess if you think about it, if we're going by Lucy's timeline and her reaction to the 800 and everything, we're kind of over here after COVID thing pre happening. That's odd, because I haven't looked at it that way. I have looked at it this way before. Very curiously. This is the hopium that I was trying to get to earlier anyway. Depending on how you... Yeah. If you're following this move and charting the trend line here, back 2020, there would have been a rising wedge pattern, which is bearish. And everybody was bearish at this time, especially crypto savvy. Because because I listened to crypto savvy <laughs> before I got really, uh, really solid in my, my own TA skills. Um, I was ready for 3000 and waiting for a bigger dump to come. So I missed all this, but this is when BitBoy made all this big money, which he has not been able to reproduce that, has he? Interesting, huh? But the point that I wanted to make this over here, we had a rising wedge. We had a bear trap here where we fell below this trend line, broke back into the pattern, broke out of it, and then we went parabolic. That's exactly the same thing that we did over here that I was tracking for the longest, longest time. Ad nauseum here on my channel. I'm sure everybody got tired of playing with it or hearing about it. But following the bottoms there. Oh gosh, that doesn't look like it at all. What the hell happened? It wasn't you. It wasn't you. Oh God, Jimmy Lon's here. We're following this main trend line from the bottom. So he popped out there and then we did the bear trap, right? 
well, you start balling the tops of this little guy from something, and you can do a channel, but. We were we were looking at this little guy right here. Or similar. Somehow I still don't think I've got that nail just right. Like we I think it might be in this. We're connecting these dots in a rising wedge. Breaking out and looking for a breakout there. And then here we went parabolic like crazy. When you flip that over to the channel. Oh, anyway. We got the nice the big move that we've been tracking for a while. Now I just got a big old messy, ugly chart here. But do keep in mind, very few Bitcoin available out there. I am still looking at, um, not on this particular chart, but this one. Top of this trend line here, about 78,000. I still think we got a chance to go up. I'm looking more for a bigger dump from here. Like what we're experiencing, that's what I was expecting. I thought oh, we can come up here, a possibility to come up here and then get a bigger pullback. So, wow, man. Wow, man. Bitcoin. Let's take a look at some altcoins. I've been um, following Maple. It's over on Coin W. Uh, Coin, Coinbase has got it. Okay, cool. It's on BNB chain, uh, Gate.io, Bitstamp. I don't think Mixie has it. Coin... Coin, Coin X has it, that's where I got it. This little guy, real world asset, I like a lot. She was up here hanging around. She got up to $30. She's half price right now, guys. She's at $15 right now. Let's zoom out and take a look at this one. Yes, I've been adding this little sucker to my bag because I like this little guy. Possible inverted head and shoulders that, um, you know, it confirmed. Oh, we got to look at it and see if it's going to... Uh, validate so as long as price does not come below this area here it will remain valid if it makes a lower low then this whole pattern is invalidated but right now we're still above the nine moving average here on the weekly by chance and we can easily come back up retest this area or break out back, back out of this area for maple and then i'm looking for 43 dollars for a measured move and also confluence at the 618 Fibonacci. So imagine from 15 to $43, that's about a 3X that I'm looking for out of this one. Real world asset, kind of cool. We looked at the, uh, we've looked at it before, but we can look at it briefly. I'd like to see if I, if I can keep hanging around this area. Maybe I can nibble some more and, and build up a bigger bag. But I like this one as a longer term hold. It's got a $120 million market cap. 10 million total supply, 7.8 million circulating supply. Yeah, sounds juicy. Most of it's already out there. All time high for this guy was $68.20. Valuation grade 73% undervalued. It's got great scores here, man. Oh, I likes it. I likes it. I like the scores of it. Now, as far as what it does, Lending markets redefined, so it's more institutional leaning toward that way, which is a big narrative. So less piquing my interest for it. I'm not going to sit here and just read things off, but you can do your due diligence, but it looks like a nicer one. Um, the uh, the people associated with it. Check out the team. We believe in a transparent financial system, efficient and transparent with backgrounds in traditional finance and fintech. So this is the backgrounds they're coming from. And I want to see my developers with that kind of background. Whereas like something like I was looking at another project, Rio, is it Rio? And the, the founders, you know, are the same ones that did Floki. So we get yeah, a kind of big difference possible in you no know, knowledge base and experience and even connections or maybe even being commissioned to do this project by the bigger people trying to put tokenization into place i don't you know i i like to go where the big money's going i like to look at the projects that the big money is involved with because the big money is here 
and they are the biggest whales of all. And it's it's very it behooves us. I've been wanting to use that word all day to, to pay attention to them and to also kind of do what they're doing. So I'm looking at this one and, you know, we're partnering with Circle USDC, right? Because mm -hmm, USDC is going to be the one that they choose. I, I think it sucks personally, but hey. We see we see this weakness when the banks went down, right? Yeah, that's that's too that's too centralized right there. That's that's not not how it should be. But that's the one that they've choose to usher into this narrative. So we're gonna see real world assets with USDC mostly. I expect them to try to do something dirty with Tether, but I think Tether's got their head on straight right. I think they're on this strong, and I hope that they are. And I like the fact that they the Tether puts their profits in the Bitcoin. Love that. They may have gotten off to a shady start. I don't know. There's rumors. There's things. But hey, they're pretty dang solid now. And the only one that I think doesn't really have the big people's fingers as in there like they do a circle and some of these other CBDC type things that will be coming around. So Maple, I like what I've seen there. I like it on the bigger time frames. Looking at it on the daily. Yeah, she's coming down, baby. She's already bounced off the 200 moving average. May not bounce off of it again. I believe that this is a... I don't think that's one of my lines. I think that is the 800 moving average. Let's see if we can clean this chart up. So we got Lucy down here. The... 360 getting ready to cross, cross over that. That's bullish. That is the 800 moving average. 200's below it, which is technically bearish, but she's getting close to it. There might be a good cross coming. I kind of, I just, I just like what I'm saying. I like this, the rounded shape here. Little scallop. We got a nice little pullback. Fibonacci wise, that looks like a 786 area. Yeah. Good area for support right here. I like this. So this one's one on my radar that I'm kind of nibbling at in these zones right now. And in hopes of seeing it go up at $68, man. That 68 was his last all-time high. I'm kind of looking at, you know, for the first higher targets. I think it could do... Man, these things could do huge with real world assets it could be something major these could just be the beginning like but i am looking for like more major pullbacks and corrections at these areas 77 dollars and 86 dollars and so from 15 to there which would take patience and the market turning around and a lot of things that aren't happening right now but looking into the future i like that and uh just what i'm looking at what are you guys looking at Extremely desirable. I have a plan. D C N A. That is a beautiful. You can, I cannot say anything bad about that. And in fact, when you look at it, even most of your influencers here on YouTube, that's exactly what they're doing. Especially if they got some big money coming in. I don't know. Maybe from some monthly income of some kind of where they have like two thousand people paying them money every month, and they have lots of big trades there. All of a sudden, um. Yeah, when you listen close, you, you hear that that's what, what's going on. The big chunks of money that come in. It's being DC8 in the projects. <laughs> One of my 180 coins all just spread out through there. Trying to catch them all. He's got a lot more than I do. I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to get rid of, get out of that bad habit myself. I've got way too many coins. I'd, I am a coinaholic. I'm a coin addict. I keep buying. I can't help it. I want them all. I have way too many. I know that it's a problem, but at least I've got it narrowed down to a smaller portfolio. Most, mostly, mostly. But I mean, a lot of people that really nail in this market don't hold no more than, you know, five to 10 coins. A lot of them that do, but bigger positions in those coins. And when you're spread out along 180 coins or a hundred coins or the more coins you're spread out, you got your diversification, but it's also it's also weighing you down. It really is. And especially with Bitcoins, you know, next time, that is one of the things I want to make sure that I change is not be too, too diversified. One hit a quitta. How's it going, my man? What's up, good peoples? I'm missing y'all. That's good to have you back here, man. Oh, we got more chat here. I missed it all. Okay, so I got two. 
I think I get to the bottom of the chat and then there's an arrow and there's more. Fish Guru. Okay, yeah, okay, we already did that one, right? I think it's worth bringing up the Bitcoin dominance broke up. It's eight year top trend. With that, we did not look at um, while B BTC was dumping because I got distracted on my other little message that you reminded me of. But um, eight year top trend. That I, I really didn't notice when I was over there. I should. Let's look at that. I want to see that. Bitcoin dominance. That's others' dominance. There we are. Bitcoin dominance. Let's go over. I guess the monthly would tell us. Let me read that again. Make sure I understood that. I think it's worth bringing up the Bitcoin dominance broke out of its eight year top trend. An eight year top trend? Oh, you're the trend, trend, the trend line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was looking at, I was looking at levels for some reason. Um, yes, that is extremely noteworthy. And, you know, you usually look for volume for breakouts. And some people will argue that it doesn't apply for indices. I don't see that it, don't see why it wouldn't, but anything that gives you a clue for what's going on, it's normally a good sign for a breakout to the upside. Man, this is the monthly candle and it's above the nine moving average for Bitcoin dominance. This is something that we've talked about for months ago. It's like I was wondering. And one of the reasons that I was so glad that I'm heavy, I'm, I am heavy in Bitcoin. My portfolio is probably right now, it's mostly a, a lot more into Bitcoin. Um, but I, I try to keep it somewhere about 60 to 75% Bitcoin, for real. And that has, that does a lot. For these moves, since I'm not all in altcoins, I'm not getting the big, huge pain that a lot of you guys are because some of you guys are just mostly in altcoins. And so you got got the brunt of it. Um, that's one of the changes that I made sure that I did this time because I did the other thing last time. All altcoins, not very much Bitcoin. Bitcoin outperformed altcoins for the first half of the, the run like it's doing now. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, well, when's, when's the number going to go up? When, when, you know, altcoins were slow. And that's because Bitcoin dominance took off. Kind of like what I think we might see here. I'm, I've got a concern, and I've had this concern for a while, and I've voiced it, that Bitcoin will steal the show. You've heard me say that. I think it might have a good chance of really, really stealing the show. When you look at the global adoption we got right now, and that's the whole secret to success right there. We got the whole world. This is the people's money. This is the world's money. It's not run by government or anything. And the whole world is in on this and even crypto. That's why we got these big, huge market caps that are bigger than some corporations that they had a physical product. <laughs> they got the little software developers with a coin out there. that has got a whole ecosystem that's evaluated at more than actually brick and mortar companies with real world assets. And, you know, there's a little skew there. Uh, I mean, truly, there is a bubble until, you know, the actual adoption comes and actual use for real solid use cases come. But Bitcoin dominance, man. Getting a breakout? I mean, this is a conservative measure move here. You got to look at that. You got a double bottom that's actually forming if you really want to see what's going on. I mean, if this place out, it's almost I can't I can't imagine what this market would look that look like if Bitcoin dominance got up to these levels because they've not been here since before when ETH was around, right? Ethereum caused all of this. And that's where we started getting all the other altcoins and everything before that. It was just copies of Bitcoin or copies of uh, another version like Litecoin, Dogecoin and all that. They're all just making copies of each other or maybe a few of them trying something a little different here. They, they, they were trying some different different approaches and things, but with the coins, uh, the massive altcoins that we got caused all of this and everybody coming out of Bitcoin and then expanding out into the ecosystems. And now it seems like we're starting to do the opposite. It's starting to look like all the ecosystems are we're starting to come out of that. And man, to tell you the truth, there's just so much out there right now is is too dil diluted. There's too many freaking altcoins out there. Back here, the name of the game was let's create an altcoin so that we can get a share of Bitcoin. 
people will sell their Bitcoin off raw altcoins, and we're making Bitcoin off of, you know, that was, they were trying to get some of the Bitcoin market share, and they did. Ethereum came and got a lot of it. Well, now I think the world's starting to really see the value of Bitcoin. And look, we, we haven't been past, this was 2019. We got up to 74%. This was January 21. We got up to 72%. That's kind of interesting when you consider where, where we were when we topped at the market, which was, we were at our lows. And that's when the altcoins were, were doing at their best too. It's something to, to watch too, when you're trying to figure out when to sell altcoins. You want to sell your altcoins. And then when the dominance is coming down, oh, juicy. You actually want to be buying your altcoins when Bitcoin dominance is high. So, I mean, you, uh, the US dollar narrative building your altcoins and accumulation is mostly what you see on YouTube, right? And that's what we, you know, been through too. But there's another narrative, and this actually says you're too early in altcoins. So if you don't have altcoin bags right now, let me think about that. But this is from the Bitcoin perspective, okay? This is from the perspective I'm using Bitcoin to, to buy my altcoins. And I'm using altcoins to grow my Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin is like at the tops here, that was the perfect time to get in to your altcoins. This would have been September 2019 and January and December 2020. And that was a great time to get in the altcoins. Could have bought it with a Bitcoin, Bitcoin, come all the way down here. And then, yeah. You turned your Bitcoin, turn one Bitcoin into what? One and a half? Is that what I'm getting? I got 45% gain. Your mileage will vary, but you know what altcoins you're in. But you got your multiples when it drops. So technically, the OG buyers for altcoins, if they do, some of our OGs are maxis too. But if we come back up to these areas or even higher, wherever we come up and then we top and we reverse, that is truly the place to make sure that you are packed, got your bags packed in altcoins, whether you're buying in dollars or buying in Bitcoin. And that's just, well, that's just the OG method truth. That's the best that I've ever seen. We're, we're not in that territory yet, but when we are, I'll be, I'll be shouting it, but that that will be the perfect, perfect time. And all coins dollar wise may be high and you're like, I don't want to buy that. I don't want to buy that. But still in Bitcoin value. And then with the next step that will happen in that market is when you need to be in because your Bitcoin value, you will skyrocket up. And that's that is the phase that I am truly waiting on in this market for that to happen. And we're nowhere near it. Nowhere freaking near it. We're probably about a year and a half away or a year away or something. It is crazy, but then it's a very quick season where we start coming down and you make those gains. But yeah, being above this breakout, man, that just me, I don't know. That's going to, I think we're going to see something really, really intense. Bitcoin is going to steal the narrative, steal the show. And I think altcoins will suffer. I think they'll lag. They'll come up, but I don't, I think we'll look at it and say, ah, I mean, we're getting some gains here, but it's not like the stories we heard from 2017 when everybody became millionaires. With five hundred dollars, yeah, and those days are gone. But there's still a lot of exits to be had out there. Twenty seventeen was a quick, fast one, though, man. Golly, as before, I knew what I was doing, though. It's eleven thirty-one. I don't feel like we've got very far. Fish Guru says. <laughs> Nah, news, news is never the reason and always the, the excuse. Charts told the story weeks ago. That's true. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I agree. I agree. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, that's why I, half of me feels like I'm kicking myself because, you know, I mean, I should have, I should have believed it more. <laughs> Three, six, one, eight. Oh my God. It's screaming at me. Round down. We're going to reverse. We're going to reverse. I'm like, well. Uh, Dave, he says, I'm celebrating tonight. What you celebrating, Dave? Did you do good? Frank of interest says, politics can certainly manipulate price. That is definitely true. Rising Sun, I found one. Rising Sun says, Ordy. Ordy looked like, um... Oh, man, I don't know. 
can't remember where we are now. Ooh. So already gave us this sign breaking out of that and didn't retest. So we are expecting it to come down. Man, I don't. Let's do some stuff. A lot of these things came in and they were just hyped and it's easy to see. And I, you know, I was watching the YouTuber tonight going over some projects and just the way that they explain them. I mean, we, we look at these projects so superficial and I swear to God, the meme that we look at the website is so true because that happened on the stream. I really like the colors on the website. <laughs> That's your, that's your argument before the judge or before the, the commission that we need to get in on this. I really like the whip. I mean, I know we can, we kid about it, but I mean, and just the real reason they were talking about it is just cause there's hype behind it. And when you look at the project, there's really no substance and that does matter, especially during freaking pullbacks. But, um, 40, man. I don't, I don't know. I'm starting to question Ordy. I was digging around a little deeper on Ordy. So I want to come over. Let's, let's take a deeper look at Ordy. Is it worth it or not? Because I'm looking at the technology there and they're dark, starting to do bigger, better things. I mean, I know where it's, you have ordinals and then you had this little token called Ordy. And if you thought they were the same thing, I, I found out that they're not. And let's see if we can verify that. This has got 21 million circulating supply, 21 million total supply. Market cap's just under 1 billion. So, you know, she's not exactly, you know, in the fresh pickings when we wanted her. She used to be about $8. That was the price to get her. But uh, what I wanted to check out was how Token Metrics did its valuation grade and everything. Valuation grade is 4.5%, meaning she's basically saying even now at $44 that we're overvalued. Investor grade is 65%. Fundamental grade 75. That's pretty good. I was hoping to get a technology grade. That's what I'm really looking for, for the technology. Because what is that? Because I want to make sure that this is not just like a meme token. Because I'm starting to wonder. Uh, why, did, why did we not go to the website? Let's go find the website. I want to see Ordy's website. I want to get to the bottom of this. And uh, Corn Market Cal app might tell us here too. All time high for Ordy was $96 and that was a month ago. That was nice. And all time low was seven. Was it really just seven months ago? It was at $2 and 86 cents. So she's already had a run, man. And, and kind of like I mentioned with a lot of the traders that really do really, really well with the trader mentality. Once the project runs up, you know, they're usually cut their, you know, they're out. Kind of like we were going over the Solana trade. The true trader would have looked at that that way, right? Um, where you got a trend line and then and when you break it out, take your profits and run and then move to the next one. And then maybe after this one figures out what it's going to do and has done all this reaccumulation and all that, because you don't want to, you don't want to just jump back in and, you know, it'll take it a while before she'll really, really want to run big again like she did before. So they're moving on to bigger projects and other things while they wait for the same reset. And that's just, that's a smart way to do it. So back again here on Ordy, I want to find out for sure what this guy does. The total amount. Yeah, I know that the total amount of Bitcoins is 21 million and one could be sub subdivided into a hundred million Satoshi. And there, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, first we must understand the description, which is created by writing content to Satoshi using the ordinals protocol. Inscription does not need to be, oh my God, we're going to have to go to the website. I. I I saw some information that made me kind of kind of doubt this one. So I just want I just want to find out if I can find the website. How am I missing the website here? There's a link, right? Do I have to go somewhere? What the hell? That's literally right here. Socials, official links. There's nothing there. There's just a contract. You're killing me. There's nothing on this. Off the bat, that would make me suspicious. I'm just saying. 
There is no freaking website. Time to make the donuts. All right. Well, I would like to have something official. I would like to have a white paper. I would like to have something going on. Specifically with this token, is it part of the network? If so, how does it tie into Bitcoin? Well, I mean, you know, you're writing. What? Give me some details, baby. And you're not here. GitHub's? Give me something. Yours. So clearly, I've got to do some more research on this before I can feel comfortable. What does this token do? They can be traded on centralized crypto exchanges. What else can it do? What else can you do? So I'm a little unclear on Ordi. But you broke through the area we're looking at at $49, so we got that. If we wanted to take a major move, we can take a conservative one. Just take it straight down there. Put it to the old breakout, and it tells us that we might almost be there. Maybe that we support at $36. Let's hope. We got anything for Confluence? No, I like Confluence. Yes, we do. We've got a 618 in this area. All right. It might. She might bounce somewhere on 36 to 38 dollars. She's already he bounced off the 618 perfectly. So the measure move, you know, that can be a little wish, wishy washy. But the 618, that looks kind of solid. As long as she holds that level, we're kind of should be good for, you know, some kind of little bounce or accumulation, reaccumulation. If we lose it, we're looking at $24 and that will suck, undoubtedly. Well, she's below the 666. And the 200 just crossed barely over it. The good news is that the 666 is above the 800. That's actually kind of put some helium in our balloon. So does this 360. Those all three of those heavy, 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 um, where the most of the momentum is, um, they're stacked up right and going in the right direction. So that's actually good. So that might be what actually kind of lifts us off the 618 and maybe have to fight for a right to parte and move her way back up there. She's got to fight a fight ahead of her, but 38, not bad. Not bad Getting a bounce off here, looks like. So coming down to like smaller time frames, you can kind of get a little bit more of a feel what she's doing locally. Will she come back? She might come back and retest that. Maybe, probably. If Lucy crosses over the 800 here on the 15 minute. Let's get Lucy off of there. I'm going to go to the bottom of the chat and see what she said last. <laughs> it's good. The charts tell me we might be getting a clean out for DGEN providence in the crypto space. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> I'm not going to disagree whatsoever. I, I think so too. Anything with real utility stays stagnant for a long time. I mean, just look at XRP. Uh, they're embedded with everyone, including the real world. The, the World Economic Forum and still can't break out and hold above 55 cents. That's that's very, um, very worth noting there too. On those real world asset projects and the projects that they have their fingers in, you may not see the volatility that we would normally expect out of crypto. And they might be yeah, you know, of course the to tokenomics will play a lot into that too. I mean, XRP has a ton of coins. Aspa has a ton of coins. XLM has a ton of coins. Cardano has a ton of coins. All the ones that just are, are slow. They have a ton of coins. Sheep has a ton of coins. But um, yeah, th it's kind of yeah. You might see it kind of some of these kind of more resemble stocks, you know, it may not be as exciting as well. I don't know. This this whole space is changing. It's changing, but we are getting the adoption. One thing is for true, though, that I do know is that Bitcoin is going to keep going up in value regardless. That will be constant. Altcoins will come and go. There'll be some that stay. There'll be some that change the world. 
but it's always changing, always evolving, always. But the ones that solve problems, the ones that really, really solve problems, eventually that will be where the money's made. And then of course we got all the hype coins that we can chase like we've been doing for the past, what? How many years? Since Ethereum, well before Ethereum, since all the crap coins. So the past 10, 15 years, 12, 13. I was in 2013, so that's 11. This one goes to 11. Or nerd says, I wonder if mine are sewed. Well, it's a good place to sell. A lot better to sell here than 30,000. <laughs> I think the ones in the billions of coins are hard to move sometimes. Yes, they are. They are. And they're frustrating. And then, you know, like the ones with use cases, like maybe time, Chronotech time could fall into that area. You know, I was thinking about time. And we're looking at it and, you know, I seen another um, analyst make um, you know valid comments that i really i mean we've kind of mentioned it but you know they kind of brought out i mean for real there, there's a lot of sell pressure here when this one pumps up man but then i'm thinking well this one's actually got a use case it's like is it is it going to be used to actually pay people i could see where a lot of people you know why it would be sold out quickly so that just gets me wondering so again it's always kind of cool to to look and see what these things do and how they're going to be used but you know, is it always going to have that pressure because are people going to get paid with time and then they have to convert it? Well, so they have to sell. So there'll always be some kind of sell pressure. But it looks like it's there. Now we checked out the, uh, the grades over here, but you know, Chronotech is still $18 million market cap, 710,000 circulating supply. Same for the total supply. Uh, sounds like a no-brainer from what you know we usually look at for things that could really go up and it says it's got a valuation 98 percent undervalued fundamental grade of 50 percent technology grade is lacking though uh, considering that what it does it's a human resources type thing putting workers with <sighs> in some aspects it sounds like fiverr in some aspects it sounds kind of like a, a cool version of linkedin or our human resource department and uh it, interesting project, but I think it does have some competition that's starting to show up on base. You might want to look at too. Blockchain human resources, human resources software solutions using blockchain to streamline global access to work and payments. So neat concept, and they got like three little project or products. Like Labor X is one of them. Um, this is for global recruitment, so it connects people to the work opportunities. And then you got TimeX which is plasma based exchange and this is a platform. Okay. So you got, I think it's just like your, your, your swap, your DeFi, um, centralized and decentralized technologies. So you can, it looks like where you could sell your time for dollars is what I'm thinking. It says offering the best of both words in terms of speed, security, cost, and protection against front running and illegal activities. The platform combines both centralized and decentralized technologies. Plasma based exchange. I'm mean, taking it that it will just be an exchange. And then we got Payment X, this automated cryptocurrency payroll solution for your business. This is an interesting part of it. Pay the team using crypto in one click, send and receive professional invoices, set up regular payment dates, all quickly convenient. They're not telling me, uh, you know, what what crypto we can pay in. Is it a crypto of our choice? I would hope that it is. Or is it going to be in Chronotech? <laughs> so that I'm not exactly entirely so sure of. There is a time bridge. Um, it was founded in 2016 with the vision to transform the way individuals access jobs, businesses, and connect with contractors. Uh, just trying to find. Time tokens. In order to in order to fund the development and operation of Chrono Bank System, there was a fundraising phase known as a crowd sale, where individuals could purchase time tokens at a fixed rate. Time token provides a token holder admittance to the 
Chrono Bank system operations, which means that the holders of time tokens will extend their possibilities by unlocking the unique functionalities of the system. Uh, to create new brand platforms, create assets, crowd sale campaigns to make it work the system, basically. Time token use provides extensive possibilities to the users. It allows to manage your own platforms and assets that are based on the Ethereum ecosystem. Acts as a base for all token operations as issuing balance storage transfers. Hmm. Assets define some custom internal logic to allow implementing different behavior. For example, adding a fee token to a transaction. Well, lots of boring, nerdy stuff there. I said I'm losing viewers here talking about this stuff too. <clears throat> I need feedback on the skit that I did at the beginning of the stream. Thinking about doing that as a skit. It's not really crypto related though. I just thought it was funny. Fly Hustle says, I got in crypto back in 2018. Started with the free faucets. Oh, cool. Got over 200K Dogecoin for free back. Really? It was, it was only worth $250 or $250 or $2.50 and nowhere to sell it. Now it's worth about 40 grand. Wow. That's cool. And you held it for all that time. Fish Guru says, Posi run smells like a huge drug. Well, I don't know which one you're talking about, but. They are out there. Litecoin drop was pretty good. Huge 15% off. Take a look at it. I have a Litecoin miner somewhere that I'm hoping to maybe hook back up to see if it's worth having. Oh, we're back here at the $75 area there. I hope I back down to 70 Interesting. Nice double bottom formation there. Higher butt cheeks. I like it. Kind of difficult to get a solid neckline here, but uh, we'll just cheat and cut through here. We got a lot of touches there. But imagine that, man. I'm actually going to respect this trend line there. We could, could be coming up somewhere around $160 for a measured move after you break out of this double bottom situation here. Or higher. It's got a little bit of room. Not the most precise measure move that I've taken there. 198 looks kind of cool for Litecoin. I know it sounds crazy now, but you know, all that one day when you turn around and say, gosh darn it, Litecoin's hundred and almost $200. How'd that happen? Somebody had to buy it. Had to be a reason. Does have limited supply. Does have possibility for future development. Dogecoin's mind with it. I mean, it's not a horrible thing. It's proof of works coins. So at some point, people are going to, it's kind of like what they did with Bitcoin previously. Well, this is too dang expensive. Let's find one that's, that's more of the people's money. If we can afford, they might turn to Litecoin. They might turn to Casper. They might turn to something. Whatever seems to fit the bill and solve the problem, it would definitely happen. Started seeing that back in the early days, back when it was just Bitcoin and Litecoin and a few other coins like Darkcoin. Ah, my nose is itching again. Where'd he go? Ta-da, you thought he lost me. So, oh, Litecoin there. Cool. So I was, um, I was very, I, I did not know until I started digging deeper on Proppy that they were tied to the World Economic Forum. I thought that was interesting. So I used that on my thumbnail when I, I took the cut from our stream that we did last night, um, put it out as a video, but the World Economic Forum thing, um, that was news to me. <laughs> so you got that going for you, you know, own nothing and be happy. See what we got coming into crypto? So now they're going to try to man massage us and manipulate us over to their side. So it's very important to us to be supportive, in my personal opinion, of proof of work and decentralization. 
and don't let these little huckers, huckers, hucksters get in here. That's G-rated, right? G-Lady. But Croppy, she was she was doing good. I think she dropped down a little bit. Even though it's a it's an Antichrist coin, I'm still playing it. Oh wow. Proppy? Proppy! Man. Parabolic move. This could have five stages with a blue up top. It can, they don't always play out that way, but. Look out the one little step, the third little step, maybe a three little step. Could have a couple more going on right there. How far could it go? Did we already we already did this, didn't we? I already I did a video on this. Where's the chart? I don't want to have to do all this again. Come on now. Proppy. That was a mix. Proppy. That's Proppy in Bitcoin. Which is one of the things that I did like about it. It's a coin that's any coin that is gaining against Bitcoin, man. Proppy's one of them. The Antichrist World Economic Forum coin is currently now a nice little situation where it might really gain against Bitcoin, and that's why I'm looking at it. Now, she could come back down here and, you know, still accumulate doing this double bottom. You know, we got one buck cheat. It doesn't mean that we just go up and confirm this butt cheek right now. I'm just saying. A lot of times we'll get the little pullback. So if we do, this is it in Bitcoin. That means it probably pull back in dollars too, more than likely, and might be a good place to buy it. I hate to spend my Bitcoin, just to be honest with you. I'm really picky about my Bitcoin. It hurt me today to move it over to exchange to cover my bases today. I didn't like that, but that was part of my plan B. And Proppy against, um, can I get a good chart for the dollar? Bitrix, you suck. Coinbase, I thought we looked at you. Hey, this is where we charted it. Okay. Yeah, because I think it is. It's a Coinbase. I think Coinbase is backing this one, right? So probably the best chart to look at. So she got up as high as $4, and now we're sitting at $327. We got these buy zones. Which we would have hoped would have hit today, right? With all this stuff going on, but doesn't look like a... She's being strong. Really strong, and she's still maintaining her parabola. So I'd say these buy zones that I've got down here probably will not be hit. You suck, road dog. I thought you knew what you was doing. I'm just giving you probabilities of areas and places to look for. That's what the math says to look at the places. Doesn't mean we go there. But if we do go there, look for a reaction. If you find a reaction, you might want to play it. Whenever you're looking for, you, before you enter a trade, you got to find a trigger. If you're not finding the trigger for your trade, you shouldn't be entering a trade. You need a trigger. Less of the thing that says we're going to blast. This is my signal saying buy. You're looking for the buy signal. If you don't have one on the trade, you shouldn't be entering the trade. I mean, seriously. Unless you got some kind of, you know, DCA strategy, putting limit orders in, building, you know, position trading. But if you're trying to trade, swing trade, day trade especially, especially day trade, you got to have a trigger. If you ain't got a trigger, if you're jumping in just because it looks good, can work for a while. I need a trigger. Trigger. I like to use the nine leaping averages as trigger a lot of times. I'm looking for this curb thing for the longest. Trying to see if we gotta. Yeah, they're so freaking subjective. But definitely a parabolic. We'll just do it with the O standard trend line way. This way we get a line in the sand telling us when we should get out. This is exactly how I play these moves. At some point, they will break. You need a line in the sand to tell you when to get out. That's what these lines are for. And we just keep connecting them from bottoms. So right now we got this one. If this one breaks, it might bounce off of here. But in all seriousness, if this one breaks, you might want to, you know, clear your position. 
to say it. What could be happening, though, is that we're just getting another little rounded, another little angle forming from here to go to the upside. Could be happening. Let's look at the indicators here, see if they support that idea. On the one hour, MACD is starting to come around and liking the idea, maybe entertaining the thought of it. Come to the four hour. Eh. I'm not seeing it totally bearish or yet or anything. I mean, we're below the nine and below the 21, but we're at a point where we can bounce back above that. When it comes to a situation like this, I again point you to the 200, the 100, the 50, the 21, the nine. They're stacked up perfectly in a fan shape in order from smallest to largest. That's bullish as you can get other than price being below the 21 and stuff, but you know, price would, you know, it can come around. But as long as these bigger moving averages are doing that, man, that's, that's a lot of momentum to the upside. Or proppy. Okay, or we're sitting at what? 327? Still kind of high, but she may be getting ready to do something. How far was she go? Didn't we already do that? <laughs> we already did all that. I got 543, 610, and 770. I know. I'll be looking for 539, 540 if she decides to take another leg up. I feel like I've talked about this coin too much. Ward Nerd says I'm going to get one of those micro BTC miners, hook it to the solar system, and see if I can uh, rat nab a BTC. <laughs> I would like to get another miner, another BTC miner. I had one, it got burned up in a fire. Sucked. But it's, with the happening coming with BTC, man, it's gonna be harder and harder. So I'm, I'm really starting to look more to probably just altcoin miners and then trade over to Bitcoin. Do it that old school way. Or maybe just hodl some altcoins and wait till the Bitcoin dominance flips from Bitcoin dominance. What we were talking about earlier, when Bitcoin dominance goes up at the top of the chart and flips over, and then uh, or when, when Bitcoin dominance is at the bottom when she comes down to the bottom, and then flip them out. Probably getting the prop. Easy bugs. Floki Toshi says, "Floki safe. Let's check it out." Where is my Dex tools? Is that you? Bloke is Snape Moon, how you doing? Let's go to the 12. 12 hours should be good. Man, I remember we used to have to chart this on the one hour when she was all fresh and new and everything. I think we first found out I think it was right when it was coming down from this move. And it's like, oh, it's too early. But then she did this Adam and Eve bottom and it's just been cool. I'm back in on this one now. I, I couldn't help it. We got back down to the bottom of my trend line. I'm like, well, I just want to jump back in. So still, she can still come, you know. She's handled this dump pretty good. Have, hasn't even yet come back to test this support. I'm on the 12 hour, 12 hour chart here, man. This is, this is, this is as bad as it got for Floki. Floki safe move. That's worth no, that's worth noting. I can't see what the measurement is, but it's not much. So the decimal nine zeros, 1537-ish, somewhere right through there, 1513, somewhere in the lower 15s. Look like a good place. If we get a bounce off that area, I mean, that you could consider that as possible. Trigger, that's what I'd be looking for. And still looking for a target. I well, initially we'd want to at least come back up to our previous high. So for a short term target, you'd have that. And from here to there, yeah, hold on, wait for it. 185% gains. Yeah, that's, that's what's so cool about Floki. Okay, safe moon. You can get those little gains like that. Sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes you know, she went sideways a little bit over here, but she still makes some nice gains. Look from these areas to the tops, 188%. But it didn't just do it once. She does it a lot of times, 155%. From here to 
so it, it's kind of a cool little trader coin, honestly. So, I don't know. It's just been fun. I appreciate you, Floki Toshi, for uh, popping on the stream way back in the day. And let me see you popping in here. And uh, yeah, I'm always happy to look at it. It's been good. It's been good. I don't, there's uh this is what it looks like. I don't think we went over this. Contracts verified, no honeypot. Buy tax is 1%, sell tax is 0.08 to 1%. Community trust is 96.4%. It's got a deck score of 84 out of 99. Looks like there's been some nice little buys going on here. Buys and sells. Loki safe, man. Good news, the world rejected world coin. Oh, really? It always throws me off. Ooh, was she cheap? Was there some news on it? Or is she getting ready to pop back up? like we can come down to there three dollars huh she should have went parabolic what she's trying I haven't kept up with the news on this one I'm just kind of curious about it because it seemed like everybody kept making bank man it just kept making because last time it was it was what two sixty six and went all the way up to eleven dollars man, almost twelve dollars, crazy. There's some bullish divergence here, meaning that um, <laughs> she, she may give us a little surprise. And even though okay, so I'm seeing the bullish divergence here, and normally I would expect us to come back to this trend line. Let's take a fib. Let's see. Didn't quite make it to the 886, but it looks like the 786 area here at 437, 435 is holding. No guarantee that that will stay holding, but it could. I would be looking, I'm following just the local pattern here, probably coming back up to the 618 here. This trend line about 576 in that area and probably most likely get rejected there for a, a maybe come back to the trend line or, or even lower so that's what i would be on the lookout for this this situation something like that we take into account this little guy okay how well this measurement would stack up going from the wick straight down to the line putting it here come on come on baby kind of takes us down to the that area 295, maybe. A little confluence there at the bottom of the trend line. Ooh, world coin. Interesting. Sam Webb says, I like the skits, dog. The 911 call was kind of scary at first, but it got funny as hell. <laughs> like some cranking. It just came to me last night. I don't know. I'm out, um, I don't remember seeing it played out anywhere, but I thought, I'm out. I might do something with that. Has nothing to do with crypto, but I just think it'd be something funny to throw in every once in a while. In the moment, that CPU mining is so proper right now, just buy old cell phone. Really? Really? I've got a couple of old cell phones. I don't know that they would have enough juice to do much. I have to see which projects um, that would work for that. I don't know if they got some that are working with phones, but I like mining. I want to get back into it. I need this market to go up so I can get some pull some capital out to start putting it into the mining operations. I've already got a shed slash greenhouse, but she's leaking water. Don't know what's up with that. 
So there's a delay with the hobby mining project. Trying to think what what is it that I'm really trying to look to buy right now? Render. I like Render. See what Render's doing because uh, she definitely fell today. Retesting this trend line. Oh, yeah. Looks like she would never. Yeah, I remember she was up here and I'm looking at this trend line and then also I got, you know, the target down here. I'm like, what situation could we do where we wouldn't bounce and just wick down there? Hello. We found it. A situation like today did come down to this six stars and 57 cents here. Oh, nailed it. It's all fibs, people. Fibs and trend lines. This is all. You can do this at home. I'm not anything a magician, but. You, you will see the methods that I use. You will see them very accurately get hit a lot of times. I'm just telling you. It works in good for my strategies. It seems to be repeatable. I don't have to give you something vague and like it's away from the 21 moving average, so you know. Nah, I, I can I can give, I can usually throw some numbers up there for a nice little zone and show you how I do it so that you can replicate it in your own charts. So we're going to focus mostly on, on the, the, the membership streams, which I need to uh, figure out when I'm going to do the next one. I just haven't had time to actually sit down and like kind of, I'd like to do like a little bit of a syllabus to go over some things and then go into the, any kind of fun stuff that we saw to get into. Whew. Man, today was a big scare, but I, thank gosh, my coin X, my spot margin stuff. I got it situated. I got my risk under control. It all looks. It looks good now. I lost a couple. Luckily, they were small. I got my render one back, so that's cool. I think I got a bigger one now. I mean, the whole goal for me to do this is to build my position, build my bag bigger. And then the have a day like today where I've got to crap, I go in to defend it or else I'm in trouble. Of the... Yeah, I don't want to go down that road. So we're good now. But I still got to keep an eye on it. You got to keep your risk management up now. Like we're saying earlier with Bitcoin, I expect big pullbacks. We got to pull it, put that into your system. So using leverage, you're going to have to dial it back. You're going to have to, because this is not going to be the only big drop. And we're still trying to see if we're going to get an even bigger drop from it, right? It could still go lower. We can see up to 30% drops from Bitcoin alone. It could be up to 40% or more for your altcoins. I mean, that's an ouchie. You got to start. So if you're doing leverage, especially what I'm doing, the long term leverage play, I've got to watch it carefully. I'm, I'm really, I thought I was keeping it around two to three X and I've still got to keep an eye on that. Gosh, darn it. I've been buying maple today, been buying a little bit of Ondo. Ondo hasn't really fell back too much. Those are the real world assets. Like most people, it's the hot narrative. But after BlackRock comes out and says that, you know, you're, you're kind of silly if, you're, if you don't pay attention to it. And so since this is early, still early, there are some of you guys that were out there looking at this stuff way before this, the narrative started getting hot. Shout out to you guys. You know who you are. Get one here asking for some of these coins. And I'm sitting here looking and I'm thinking, well, how's the legislation going to play out with this? There's going to have to be a lot of development here. So, you know, the, the, the emotions came masquerading, masquerading as logic or maybe it's just faulty logic. But uh, all it takes is Larry Pink to come out and say, yes, yeah, we're planning on freaking doing it. Now they're all hot. Now real world assets, coins that aren't even real world assets are trying to, trying to be. They want to jump in on that narrative and that's the ones I want to stay away from. <laughs> I want to stay with the ones that are actually trying to do something for real. And I don't know. Eventually, I think it'll be a good move. So Ondo's fell back into the pattern. So we might see 53 cents, 54 cents out of Ondo. Could happen. Let's take a quick little fib here to see if there might be a little area of support that she's finding now that might stick. I'm still looking at 53. Now currently we're at what, 72 cents? Maybe we found support. We got a higher high over here at the 618. We're maybe, we got a chance actually to come back above this two and moving average. See the 100's over here above it. It's giving us a little extra lift there. So we got a chance to maybe win it back. If we start losing it again, that 100 may cross over bearishly on it, and that would suck. I would look to see, you know, any of the other moving averages crossing bearishly over first. So far, here on the four hour, look what's, look what's happening with her nine moving average. She's doing a 180 right there. 
that's bullish. That's bullish as all get out. Might very, very possibly be a nice little bounce right here. I coming right now for Honda. Let's go to a smaller time frame and see if we can see what it says. 15 minutes bearish. But there is the 100 cross bullishly over the 200. So that's a little bit of weight here. So that's the positive sign I'm seeing to look for here. People, a lot of people talk about when moving averages get tight. I never look at that. I'm always looking for crosses. I look at relationships on how these things cross each other. And even the angle at which they cross, a steeper angle means a much stronger move to whatever direction that that is. Um, so I guess I would read moving averages a little different than some of the other guys that you might be seeing. Give you a little different take. A little different way to look at the market. Maybe in a few things to help you uh, <clears throat> out trade some of those. Uh, really, I mean, it's just basic strategies. 200 moving average, 21 moving average. Those are just your, your traditional basic strategy TAs. That's your uh, TA 101, basically, really. I had this to narrate it. it. It works. It's a good strategy. It's just the one that everybody knows. It's been around. It's older than the hills. Doesn't mean it's not effective. Doing movement average is always going to be effective. Anytime you're above it, you're bullish. Anytime you're below it, you're bearish. You know, in general. Ob is one I've been looking at. OM. I, I nibbled some of this today because, you know, I, I wasn't going to buy it at a dollar. And, um, nice parabolic move. I mean, the charts are saying, yeah, I probably want to have some of this before she goes at butt crazy. So she could get a couple more stages, man. I'm, I'm just telling you. How far could she go? Did somebody ask that? Did somebody say price prediction? What kind of channel do you think this is? Yeah. Right. Definitely one that loves new price predictions. Cause they're fun. And the, my gosh, there's a good chance that this would play out. Because the fibs can be magical that way. First of all, I'm looking for some confluence. A little, a little. Not the beautiful ones. Not the beautiful ones I want. Nope. Oh, we found it. We found it. We found it. Praise Gouda cheeses. Sweet cheddar cheeses. That's not sacrilegious. I said cheeses. God has a sense of humor. I'm just saying. Nice. We found it. Um, <laughs> she's Yeah, she needs this pullback where she's coming back. But uh, the next one I'm going to be looking at. We got three. Seriously. 3618. We've talked about that one before. May not actually touch it. Just saying, may not actually touch it. We, you don't always see them go up, but it is definitely a zone where we start. Price starts coming up to here, uh, you know, she should get a serious pullback. Maybe like what we've just had, maybe even more. But see, it went up to this twenty, the two hundred sixty-one point eight Fibonacci projection, and that's where we we got rejected. Previously, it was the 227. So we're going to mark out this 300 area, the zeros, 227s, and this 618s. And if I'm looking for a higher target for this reach, any one of these could come into play. 
personally. I like this one at a dollar twenty-seven. I would suggest you pay special attention to that one. That's just me talking crazy. But dollar seventeen also looks kind of juicy for OEM. Let's look at OEM real quick because gosh darn it, this one. Looks really interesting to me if, if it's true. Right now on trading, we've got a very strong buy from Mantra. Coming into a $562 million market cap. Circling supply for this coin is $810 million with a total supply of $888 million. All time I was a dollar four. We're sitting at 69 cents right now at this moment. But if we flip over to investor grade, that's what I'm really interested in looking at. Because then we come down and look at the juicy metrics that we've got over here. At TM investor grade, 68.5%. Fundamental grade at a high score of 72%. Valuation grade, 97.21%. Undervalued. They are saying this one has a lot of room for it to grow. I like this. I like this a lot. Technology grades coming in at 51%. Let's go check out the website. So you what the heck this thing is. Mantra regulatory, regulatory compliant RWA infrastructure for builders, for users, for enterprises, institutions, builders, and back to users. The first real world asset layer one blockchain capable of adherence and enforcement of real world regulatory requirements. And the Hongbai testnet is live. What I want to see is the people involved with this. Permissionless chain for permission applications. You can go in here and do a little bit of a deep dive. Know your counterparty. Launch products to an existing KYC AML screened audience. Build on a battle-tested chain, increase trust, transparency, secure, low cost, and fast. Optimize transactions both on-chain and cross-chain, powered by internet blockchains. IBC. Pay attention to the IBC. Cosmos ecosystem. Cosmos SDK. Oh, nice. Nice. If real-world assets are going to be a big thing, and they're looking at Cosmos ecosystem, the one that I've been calling the dark horse has been building like crazy. The one that's like seamless and all the chains just, they operate like clockwork. I find that really interesting. I did not know that before. Cosmosm integration, that's Cosmos. Enables developers to build secure and robust apps with ease. All right, um, so this is geared toward the big guys. I saw BlackRock was, or there's a, something I don't know. I'm not one. I don't want to. I want to find out who. There's a big name involved with this. I got to find out who that is. Empower builders with the tools. Blah blah blah. Let's look. Keeping pace with progress. FinTech entrepreneur, entrepreneur, John Patrick. That's the co-founder. With experience in both traditional investment banking and Web three startups like Mantra and Soma, we got. Uh, Jayant Ramanad. Ramanand. I'm still looking. Validator Dark. Maybe worth a follow over here, but um I I, I remember reading about a, a big name partner and I, I can't I can't find that. And gosh darn it, I I, I, wanna, I wanna see that about us light paper how about the light paper why well, the team it's a well-balanced mix of experienced professionals from diverse backgrounds including the seasoned veterans in the field of digital assets and cryptocurrency banking and trading with prior training and work experience at companies like pwc baml citigroup standard and ports credit suisse among others by leveraging their collective expertise, the team aims to provide a comprehensive solution that draws upon the best practices from both TradFi and DeFi to offer innovative and effective solutions for platform users. Roadmap. 
take a look at this. Test net, private net, incentivized test net, phase one in progress. Um, audit, mainnet launch, mantra finance, integration, bug bounty. So yeah, okay, pretty much your standard ones. Where can we ask questions? Still not seeing anything that comes over. I, I really want to know the, I think it was the, the, the money behind it. Um, that needs to be researched. Oh, I wish I had that. I, I, there was a name, but I, I can't find where it is. Worth deep diving. If anybody comes across that, please let me know. But I, I think it's worth playing. And this is just for this parabolic move. What if, I mean, she, she does this and she comes back. I mean, we're, we're really projecting, right? Let's say we get something like this. Hey, we're, we're, we're reaching for it now, baby, but, uh, $2, 192, 193 might be on the table after a pullback consolidation and then going for another high, something like that. Of course, then we can also turn the market cap and look for some places too. Is there any other? No, I'm not marking that one. So, um, it's on my radar. Now, as far as lines in the sand of when to get the freak out, it drops below 51 cents. I would be looking, being feeling a little bearish. She's losing this area, so she's got an. She might actually test it. She may be, might be, working her way down here. Now, now that looks juicy. Now, think about from 52 cents to $1.38 or, or higher. That gets a little bit more interesting right there. If we're ex exercising some patience. And this may, again, may only be the start of a real world asset project. I don't know. They sound very enticing, very interesting. I think this is kind of interesting here. Trend line here that we might be finding support. Keep that idea. What if she decides to just go full on bullish and bounce off this 100 moving average here in the eight hour time frame? It could happen. Definitely could happen. So we got to put this little price label right there. We'll color this one orange for uh, keep an eye on that one. Find a bounce there and get back above this trend line. That's hella bullish. Seeing what else we got here. Yeah. See this? Mm. You just find all kinds of goodies when you play around with these trend lines. That's another support line right there. Look at this. That's our channel that we're, we're in. Baby, baby, I, I just like it. I just like it. So I'm currently working with trying to build a bag of this. And if we go down to 52, I will definitely be adding to my bags. Hey. Haven says I bought some more of souls. Is that bad? You know about Solana? I don't think you can go bad with Solana. You've been killing it, Avon. I, th I think you got that ecosystem. You, you, you've got it. You got the feel for it. it. It sounds like you in the zone with it. That's a good thing. Hope it's still working out. Klaus Coin, you own nothing, and it will all be tokenized. Crypto 420 says, I'm buying uh, Cast Neon, Pith, and Ondo. Good choices, good choices. Uh, Neon, man, that one's. Oh. Let's check on Neon. That one's been falling off, and. I'm. Don't mean to offend anybody, but I just have this habit of second guessing Solana coins. I just do. I don't know. Maybe it's from, you know, I've, what all happened last time and smoke and mirrors and just uh, PTSD or something. But, you know, I just have to, I've got to always second guess them. So Neon supposed to be Ethereum virtual machine, right? For Solana. But don't they already have that worked in there? So it makes me wonder. Looking at Neon, we're, we're, 
in a range that could be accumulation maybe a wyckoff accumulation might be a spring that you know drops us somewhere to 88 cents or something before taking us up i don't know but i'm kind of curious what token metric says about neon so market cap 64 million still small circulating supply is 57.6 million out of a total supply of 1 billion not not the greatest, not the worst, but you know, it is what it is. So that's something to watch out for. There can be token unlocks, whatever schedule is coming out. This is making me feel a little bit better about it, but investor grades 58%, fundamental grades 55%. You know, those are okay. Valuation grade says it's still undervalued. So I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, okay. Um, as far as the website, let's get a better feel for this. The first paralyzed EVM on Solana ne Neon EVM is Ethereum virtual machine empowering developers to build and deploy DApps seamlessly from EVM chains to Solana, all from their existing code base. So yeah, cool. Are there other projects that are doing this is what I'm wondering, or was it? Oh, I got modularity. Then that's interesting. I like that aspect. At Neon EVM, we believe in the power of modularity in blockchain. Okay, now you're winning me over with this. I like that narrative. That's going to be a big narrative. All right. So I like that. Cosmos is also doing some things like that. The aim is to integrate resource-intensive operations across distinct layers, ensuring that the computational storage and consensus mechanism operate independently. With a bunch of nerd stuff, going to give me a headache. Just tell me numbers going to go up, baby. Tell me you know what you're doing. Yeah, this is this is hardcore deep dive at work right here. No, you should seriously deep dive. Get a feel for what these projects do. I mean, a lot of times I do buy things based on the chart. That's the degen in me. But you know, when we start getting these big old pullbacks, it kind of makes you think. Maybe I need to take a closer look at these guys, right? So it's probably not a bad thing. So there may be a spring if we're in Wyckoff accumulation. Might come a little bit below that. I got a little trick that I kind of use. Not saying that it will play out perfectly or anything, but at least gives us something to shoot for, right? So maybe 90 or even 76 cents if it wants to drive pricing down before coming back into the range and then doing the white cough accumulation, blah, blah, blah. And I can't spring, come back, and all the other little steps. Basically, if you're a range trader, it's the same thing. You come back up here and test it, and then you're up to the upside. Might, might happen. Made me feel better, but gosh darn it. Neon, you were way up here, you know, close to $2 for a lot of it. And now you're sitting here almost near one under a dollar. Looking at trend lines and places that have been lost. Yeah, we got that. So bad side could be, you know, coming back up to retest, then coming and ranging through here for a long time. I hope that doesn't happen. Or it could come back up and reclaim the pattern. That would be great. Would love to see that. That would be awesome. If you see something like that and reclaim this 200 movement average here, why are we on the eight hour? That's what we look like on the four hour. Even on the four hour, we're getting the 200 movement average there. That would be something that we would want to see, but I, I don't know. We'll be coming down lower. I see what kind of, what we're doing, but being rangy like this, very possible Wyckoff and might see a, a spring, like a quick wick down to these areas under some circumstances over the next, I don't know, week or two, five days, who knows? We lost a trend line. That's something that's noteworthy. Yeah. That could be bearish. We have to see. So I'm trying to figure out, am I, am I going to buy some more of this? I probably will if we come down here. Day B, can you look at R? Oh, so RWA is actually, okay. I thought we're just RW in general. Clearly, we had to get an RWA token out. What are you, Zend? 
Real world assets to other. Let's go over here. Let's do this first. Real world assets. Okay, so this is a real world asset, real world asset coin. This one's new to me. Market cap is a dash. Circulating supply is a dash. Total supply is 21 million. Copycat. I like it though. All time high is 14 cents and we're sitting at 0 .004. About half a penny right now. Probably got nothing over here to look at. So, because it's obviously a brand new one. Now we got Zen Finance and then we had our... Okay. Interesting. Now what did we just look at? Real World Assets RWA004. So this is where it gets confusing. So I guess we're going to take a look. Is this, this is not the same thing. Zen finance is not the same thing that we just looked at. And here we go. There's two of them. We're two to, I don't know that this is it either. There's this one, and then there's this one, which is at the same price as the one that I just looked at over on Token Metrics, but I don't know if there's the ones that you're talking about. This one's on Binance. They never rug. Um, I always have to second guess Binance coins, tokens too. Then we got Zen Finance. Got to, I guess I got to have a little bit of clarity there. Appreciate the Jeffrey Super Chat. So if you can tell me which one it is, what the actual name of it is, or maybe I need to go with the Dex tools for a contract or something. I don't know. Over here, we got, uh, got some things over on base. Rug World, <laughs> Rug World assets. That's funny. There's a bunch on Solana. Reindeer with at. Oh my gosh. It's, okay. Zen Finance. Good deal. Um. Hmm. It may not have anything over here. Well, maybe. $20 million market cap. I like it. 11, or, um, $116 million circulating supply. $200 million total supply. Okay. Kind of neutral on trader. Investors got to buy. Ooh, DP. DP is not disappointed that he has done it again. <laughs> DP, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to award you the title of Gym Finder, I believe. Well, Donna did have that title. We're in different time zones. Don't see very much of her anymore. So you may become the resident gym binder. Technology grade 72%, 88% evaluation grade, fundamental grade 57%, 64% investor grade. So far, so good. I'm liking everything that I'm seeing on token metrics over here. Let's take a look at Zen Finance on the website. Revolutionizing finances. Fin Revolutionizing finance with cryptocurrency-backed real-world assets. New era of financial freedom. Explore the fusion of cryptocurrency with and real-world assets. Own Zen Finance. Get it on Google Play, App Store, and Android. Funds insured by Tidal Finance. Audited by Surtech. Award-winning technology featured on CoinDesk. TC Binance-backed Zen Finance launches DeFi platform for credit unions in Africa. SDK, that's uh, I like that a lot. I 
Unrestricted membership around the world, access to loans with flexible repayment and terms, decentralized insurance to protect assets and investments. That's cool. Fluctuating and devalued currency is a worry of the past. Same with stable currencies. Earn interest in tokens. Our secure saving earn multiple levels of interest and benefits. High interest rates up to 18, up to 15% APY. Traditional interest rates offer 1% to 2% APY. Zend AI. Get real-time AI assistance for smart investments decisions. So, interesting. Okay. This one looks better than the, the I mean, the other one we looked at. All right, let's check out the chart. So we're looking for Zen. I guess we should see where it's available. It's available on Uniswap version 3, Arbitrum. Um, CoinX, got it. Bitmart, Uniswap, Dodo. CoinX, there's a link in the description below. See if we can get the chart up. Oh, yay. Go to night screen. So. Oh, she's down. Oh, look at this, guys. She's down. And MACD, look at MACD. It's only the only indicator I got up here, but uh, MACD looks nice on the four hour. We don't have enough information here. It's on Coin X. She's got a $20 million market cap. I like what I saw there. My DGen is going crazy right now. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do the Are you not going to give me that? I have no tools here to draw with, man. Where are my drawing tools? Oh, come on. Here we go. We'll just see it. Let's just let's do the real trading view. And let's come down to a smart tie Oh, look at this. Give me just a minute here. We're on the 15 minute possible breakout going on here. Not seeing the volume that I'd like to see on a breakout, but I am seeing price get above the 200 moving average on the 15. We got a little start of something going on there. It's like we're getting above a level here if we can maintain that. And then at 19.4, 19.5, be some heavy, heavy resistance at that area. If we can get above that, then we can start working on this 23, 22 cent area. Basically about 22. That looks interesting. It's respecting the angles really, really well. Millax is this. I like this one a lot. This is RWA, and I've got it on CoinX. So we must at least star this one, right? Keep an eye on this little guy. That's a... I like that one, Dave. 
They've even bringing some really good choices. MACD's looking really nice on this. We don't need to have our indicators up. Here we go with indicators. Let's come with a bigger time frame, like the four hour. Look here. Four hours ready to do it. Stochastic smooth to the upside. Got the little dot. VWAP. Uh, money flow's going to the upside. Hasn't turned in the green yet. But uh, four hour looks like she's really trying here. Don't know that that's going to be the successful move to get us to a higher high, but it's, it's a, a good starter. Um, ooh. On the six hour weird ass time frame. Let's come back to the four hour. There we go. Already got our cross here on the MACD. Six hours charting to fall behind that one. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So let's throw out a few targets here that we can use in a strategy. Let's get a few hopium targets up here too. 65 cents might be on the radar once it gets out of the little kind of range Makes a higher high from 32 cents. Might be looking at the 65 cent range. I kind of like that. I don't know that uh, from what I'm seeing on the chart that this one's going to get much cheaper anytime soon. It looks like she's bouncing off by my, my fibs. We're coming off a good. I'm buying. I'm taking a nibble right now. I'm just being flat out honest about it. I don't do this often, but when I do, it usually. It, it usually works out okay. Do you have not have any money? This is the beauty about smart margin. I need to go borrow some money from my Bitcoin. Let me borrow a little bit of money, not too much. We'll take a first nibble. We'll throw in 150 bucks. And then I'm gonna. Uh, you're running off without me, Mister. Slow down. Slow down right now. I don't. I don't appreciate that at all. So I'm going to take a nibble and um, she looks like when I might want to build a little position in for a, a little swing trade or maybe a position trade. And I, I like to start out with a nibble. If you want to call it FOMO, call it DJ. It may be, but it's a pretty good space where I got pretty good risk to risk control. So I like that. When I see that, I like to jump in on them. If I can get over here and execute this in time. RWA exchange. There we go. Where's on? Oh, gosh darn it. I didn't move that over. You're supposed to move that over. That's why I'm not having any luck here. I got to move money over. You guys a lot. Just 150, baby. Just 150. Why is this not working for me? We're on our 50. There we go. Now we're back in. No, I don't want that much. Just 150. All right. Cheryl, don't you go up on me anymore. That's enough. That's enough, mister. Stop it right there. So my nibble, I'm, I've got 150, but I'm not putting it all in. I'm just taking half of that for my nibble. And then I'm going to see if she gets a little pullback on this little small time frame. If she doesn't, then we'll execute the rest of it. And then wait for a bigger pullback for our next low which hopefully be a higher low and then execute more and that's just kind of how i work this so my nibble is in on rwa appreciate that db this one looks like a cool one we need to add this one to our uh, watch list here cool i like that zen finance good find good find 
Guys, it is now time for me to turn into a pumpkin. Been on here way too long. It's 1247, really? We've been going for two, more than two hours. God bless your hearts for you and to hanging in here with me. Sorry, I didn't talk about dead people or uh, cars or all that kind of, I don't know. I was talking about crypto and charts most of the time, I think. Hope that's okay. But uh, let's take one last look here at Bitcoin like we normally do and see how she's doing. She's coming up a little, well, she's coming by down right now, but 63 is a lot better than where she was at 60,800, right? <gasps> she might come back and retest that little area. We're on what, the 15 minute? So look for maybe a 61,678 somewhere, 61,600. Or 62, 458 to 618, she might bounce off of that. That's likely, but I'm kind of really looking for the 786 or a retest of this trend line. Just saying, I am still looking for Sunday evening, tomorrow night, to kind of see what we're going to do. Remember with Bitcoin, we do have support with this major trend line. We've, we've bounced off of it. So, so far, so good. There is a chance that we can recover. And then come next week, you know, as China starts getting its ETF money out there and ready, it might be the pump that we need for the more upside. Just some things like that. We'll look a little bit more at the weekly time frame and <laughs> how the sentiment seems to be. But quite honestly, just what I see here on the weekly, stochastics are coming down to the downside and they can do that. But at some point, there will be bottoming out and flipping. So we've seen a lot of this move already, it looks like. And that was the weekly time frame. Two hours showing the little signs of wanting to try to do something. We'll keep an eye on this, but I am looking for possibly maybe for us to come down 60,800, 61, 600 is a really good target that I'm actually looking at there. Looking at total threes, looking like we're getting a nice little, nice little bounce here, regaining the um, nine moving average on some of these smaller time frames. That's a good sign. So altcoins are starting to get a little happier. Let's let's talk about this for a minute. I'm on the two hour time frame here right now. We'll just we'll get a few little lines in the sand established here for Yeah. So we've got an angle and I'm respecting that angle. Just just be cautious that we may not get above this 21 moving average on total three, meaning that there may be about like $30 billion come back into the market, bringing us back to the areas that we were at before earlier today. And you'll probably like it. If you if we see that total three is getting rejected here, not good. And some of the signs I'm seeing here, kind of say we might get that. So I'm looking for tomorrow, maybe, maybe, or maybe later on tonight, in the end to tomorrow evening, maybe we can see we got to regain this nine moving average on the two hour it looks like there might be a retest of this area meaning the altcoins are starting to go start looking good people are going to say oh good it's all over it may not be so we got to watch this very closely especially tomorrow tomorrow evening we start seeing a retest um, a rejection at this area yeah you got to get ready for something bigger or just as bad as what we experienced maybe a retail you know living that nightmare all over again However, if we can break up above this trend line, that's what I want to see tomorrow. So that's what I'm seeing. There's some little bit of bullish divergence here. So that I'm definitely seeing Alcoin should be starting to recover a little bit. We just don't know if it's going to stick. So see of green right now on the uh, one hour. And so traders might have a nice little play here for some short term longs. Some scalpies on some of these altcoins tonight and tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for being with me. Tomorrow's church day. Go to church. Say hi to God. It does the body good. God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Franklin claimed that this was the real cause of the American Revolution. 
Most of the founding fathers realized the potential dangers of banking and feared bankers' accumulation of wealth and power. Jefferson put it this way. I sincerely believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. That succinct statement of Jefferson is, in fact, the solution to all our economic problems today. Here's how it works. They print it, we borrow it, and we pay them interest. This is garbage. This is garbage. You people in South Africa, you have your RAND, right? That's going to zero. That's going to zero. This is going to zero, too. Euros are going to zero. The yen's going to zero. The Chinese currency is going to zero. It's all going to zero against Bitcoin. If you don't understand that yet, you're going to be impoverished. You're going to be on the street. You're going to be begging. You're going to be out of business. You're going to be toast. James Madison, the main author of the Constitution, agreed. Interestingly, he called those behind the central bank scheme money changers. Madison strongly criticized their actions. History records that the money changers have used every form of abuse, intrigue, deceit, and violent means possible to maintain their control over governments by controlling money and its issuance. The battle over who gets to issue our money has been the pivotal issue throughout the history of the United States. Wars are fought over it, depressions are caused to acquire it. Yet after World War I, this battle was rarely mentioned in newspapers or history books. Why? By World War I, the money changers, with their dominant wealth, had seized control of most of the nation's press. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Come on, come here, boy. Come on. <laughs> you freaky dog. Good night, John boy. <laughs>